Hello and welcome to Francis Works in the vlog where one twenty-something lives as a working artist. Today in Francis Works in Theatre we're going to be talking about applying for jobs. Right now it is the beginning of August and I have been applying for jobs in costume shops at professional theatres since May. I have applied to 13 so far. I have been through three interview cycles um, and today I'm preparing to apply for about nine more. I think this year has been a hard cycle for people applying for jobs in production and theater because a lot of theaters didn't have a 2020-2021 season. Um, so they would keep their office staff around, but if you're not producing shows, you don't need to hire people in production. Um, and now that they are producing shows again, a lot of theaters that I've seen at least um, have truncated seasons or half of them are online or something like that. And so they don't need full production staffs. I've seen a lot of theaters trying to hire um, smaller production staffs than they usually have. Like maybe they would have six people in their costume shop usually, but this year they only have three. So I think what that's part of what's making it so hard to get a job this season is that there's probably just as many people looking for production jobs as before the pandemic, but there's a smaller number of production jobs. So today I'm just gonna take you through my application process. It has four basic steps. I'm sure you've been through them before. First, I compile a list of jobs to apply to. Then I make sure my portfolio is up to date write a resume, and finally, write that cover letter and send everything off. Step one, compiling a list of jobs to apply to. I start online like I'm sure everybody does. I start with offstage jobs. I look on backstage sometimes, and I look on Facebook groups. There are lots of Facebook groups that are about looking for jobs in theater or places where theaters can post jobs. And once I've exhausted all of those website and Facebook resources, I look on, I actually go to the Lord Theater's websites and I check their work with us listings because sometimes they don't post on the job search websites. So after I compiled my list of places to apply to, I fixed my portfolio. I started with my about section. I have a little bio of myself on my website. And since it's been about a year since I needed to update my portfolio, I changed my bio to reflect what I've been doing in that year. I then added pictures from my uh, job this summer at the summer stock so that I had you know, a record of the things that I did there. On this recording, it looks like you see it twice, but I actually have two different pages about the, that show um, because I functioned as a, as a draper and also a stitcher in different points. So I have a draping section and a stitching section. And then after I updated all those pictures, I was all done. So here is my completed resume. Obviously my name goes right on top, nice and big, followed by experience. A lot of theater professionals will tell you to put your resume for theater with like the juicy stuff on the juicy stuff on top in this experience portion rather than chronological order as in a traditional resume. I have chosen to put mine in chronological order anyway. I think, yes, you wanna see the juicy stuff first, but I think when you're a person who's still learning like I am, it's important to show a journey as well. So I kind of show that journey from bottom to top, from um, less experienced roles to more experienced roles. So obviously then I've got contact information on the side. I have that deleted right now, so not everybody on the internet and see it, then education, relevant skills, and references. Obviously your relevant skills are important. Uh, special skills are what they're also sometimes called, just so that the theater knows all the things that you can do. So I have things that are not particularly special to costume technicians on, um, in my special skills section because I want them to know that this is a thing that I learned as an apprentice or something like that. Um, just so they have an idea of what my skill set is. And then I've been advised by different people to 
write references available upon request underneath my references section. Right now I'm choosing to actually have my references already listed because I've been applying to a job, a lot of jobs where the listings ask you to include at least two. So I just already have that in there so they don't have to ask for it. And obviously a lot of the things like relevant skills and who I'm uh, referencing change if I'm applying for something that's not in costumes or if I'm applying for a job in education or something. And here's my cover letter. I have it on the same sort of layout as my resume so they look nice and put together. That seems good to me for, you know, trying to get jobs in the arts because you want it to look beautiful. So obviously I have my name nice and big, then contact information on the side and the date and the place it's going to. Um, and just like any other cover letter, this is really a place to like sort of stand out and not repeat things that are on my resume, but reinforce them. Um, I like to say, you know, as I talked about in my resume, how I like to make it go in chronological order because I like to show a journey. I like to also show a journey in my cover letter. I think that kind of sets me apart and it really tells like how, what I've done to get to this point and shows the work that I put in. So my cover letter is pretty standard. That first paragraph, this first paragraph is all about why I would like to work for whatever theater I am applying to. Then the second paragraph is kind of long um, and it tells me, it tells the theater what I've learned in other jobs that makes it good, that makes me a good candidate for this job. Um, again, it just shows that journey that I've been on. So I talk about all the theaters that I work, I have worked at. I talk about education because that is also a big chunk of my life and I think it has helped me work in theater better. So I talk about education and what I've learned from that and how that makes me a better theater technician because of those jobs. And then at the end is just um, the next step. So like what's included with the cover letter um, that I expect to hear from them soon and I thank them for their time and tell them about where to find everything in my resume just to try to make it easier on the whatever hiring director is reading this. Thank you so much for coming on that job application journey with me. I hope it helped if you are going through your own application cycle right now. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments for me. I'll see you next time. Bye.